Thank you, Antonia. Um, so this session is in two parts. Uh, the first part uh, deals with who's a quality researcher and how do you attract um, a quality researcher. Uh, what I would do is just in maybe five minutes, just try and bring these together and perhaps crystallize the lessons from different institutions in terms of what has worked in, terms, um, in attracting researchers and what has not worked. Um, then that would actually feed into the next discussion which deals with creating an enabling environment, incentivizing as well as nurturing and retaining quality researchers. So to start this off, what has worked and what has proved challenging or what has not worked in terms of attracting quality researchers. I could start this off by perhaps pointing out one um, avenue of attracting researchers which has not come up here so far. Uh, we get a lot of unsolicited applications, which I guess most of you do, and um, that's through the website. And it's, it's made us look at the website quite carefully, and perhaps if we could enhance some of the avenues, um, the internship opportunities, and create clear paths for potential applicants to know what they can attain if they spend time with us, that could, and that could possibly be you know, one way of attracting other quality researchers. So um, that's one thing that has worked for us, and we'll be happy to hear uh, other examples in terms of what has worked uh, for you and what has proved challenging. Could it be where you advertise vacancies as well? Um, and we're keen to uh, hear from you on this. See, uh, there is a, I think, you know, how you take advantage of these unsolicited applications. I think that's the case and uh, you know uh, at IRDS now of late you know uh, through our work and uh, through the popularity of this discipline of uh, going I think we are getting a lot of applications for the internship an internship ranging from say uh, one month to three months and there is a requirement by the uh, uh, you know uh, dip, uh, uh, master's uh, degree program that you should go to some institute and have an internship, and that is the thing you know, going across all the uh, you know all the university departments. So that way we are able to get some interns. Now it depends on the organization how it uses that resource, which is available with you for say one month to three months. What sort of work you are giving? What kind of passionate research you are trying to make him? Because there are some mandatory requirement for a person, so you have to really create him a. Uh, give him an environment where he becomes a passionate researcher. So that is the uh, uh, you know, challenge where you know, uh, the leader of the organization, the researcher who is uh, supervising them, who is mentoring them, he has to give or she has to give you know, uh, uh, the guidance. But there are some costs also uh, because you know, if you are mentoring him you know, and then after three months he is going or she is going, you know, so three months there, you, he's or she's not going, uh, going, to, going to be a, a great researcher, so, some sort of thing. Uh, so there are huge challenges on the organization uh, faculty part also. So how, I would like to learn from the, such kind of experience, how do they do that, you know? Uh, yeah. Two, two things about um, nurturing researchers. Uh, one thing we have done, as far as I can remember at IEP, is to hold uh, research competitions just for the young people. Uh, sometimes the projects must be within the topic of the institutional program we have developed, agree on, etc. But other, in other times it, might, it could be an open topics. And then you learn about their, pa their passion, about their ability to formulate their own questions along what is being discussed. Also, when we, we engage as university professors, uh, and so what we do is assign, is, is to, for 
a course requirement to be like a, develop an essay on a topic related to the, to the coursework. And so open again the kind of questions, the kind of research that they can do. That is um, one thing. And the other thing, I, ho I hope to inspire a laugh, but the other thing we find really important in getting these young people to join IEP is that they need to be eager to work with us. And so it's like, you know, a reputational effect of so long. And so the people who really want to work with us, who find it like that it rocks to work with us is the people who will be later on successful, I think. Whether nurturing in-house talent has worked um, for any, anyone here and what lessons we can draw out from this in terms of um, getting good quality researchers with passion, uh, which has been mentioned many times here. And if you could just limit the responses to you know, a few seconds, since uh, we are over time, basically. I think it is very important that, uh, that the researchers, the young researchers who come, uh, it is very important for them to go for masters and then for PhD. So if you can have you know, joint publication with the researcher, I think that is one of the major attractions that they have. So that is very important. Yeah. No, no, they, you, no they, you see they apply and they get scholarships when they have, you know, if, if you have a publication that makes all the difference between the researcher who is working at a think tank or a university teacher. You see, so I, I, we have found that this is very important. That after the masters, for example, at our center, after masters, about eight, nine have come back and are working. And four, of, four, and four to five have, have now gone for PhD. of Ghana, we don't have solid PhD programs, and you realize that most Ghanaians, having, once they do their master's in-country, they would like to go out, out of Ghana too, and it's, it's always very difficult to get them back, because they, you know, they have more lucrative jobs and so on. So I'm just wondering how you tie them, and I know that people have said that they provide some support whilst they are away, and I don't know how you, you, you tie them and get them back. Yeah, I think like everything else, it's contextual. I don't think, uh, you know, in, I can, I'm thinking of one country where, and one think tank in one country in Africa, okay, which actually pays for all of its, which identifies its, its staff from the university, you know who I'm talking about over there, uh, gets the best students from the country, nurtures them and pays for their PhDs in their entirety, uh, and bonds them to come back and work for that think tank. And that also relates to the marketplace. There are not many places in that country that PhD researchers can work in, there may be two think tanks. So uh, it's all uh, quite contextual, and, and also relating to the salaries issue which uh, Moses raised. Uh, in some countries, think tanks pay more than other organizations. In most countries, think tanks pay less. Uh, and then the other final point is that donors often condition uh, how much think tanks pay, um, because there are a lot of contractual relationships between northern donors or intermediary organizations and think tanks in the south and that sometimes determines how much think tanks pay. So I think we need, in all of these things, we need to recognize that each context is quite specific. Yeah, very, very briefly. Uh, we also, uh, I think I want to support those who have said about internship. 
um, because uh, it really works. If you have a good internship program, uh, especially one that uh, can make people get higher jobs, then you get, uh, we have a program where we take about 10 or only 12 a year, and we get more than 300 applicants. These are people with a minimum of masters. So it works, and because when we go to recruit them, the best people in the interviews are those who have gone through the young professional program. So it's a, it's a good investment. And I think the other one is about PhDs. If you have people who have worked for you, let's say, three years uh, uh, with the masters, they want to go to PhD, they already have the, that uh, institutional culture, they have the passion, uh, and then, uh, so if you train them, they go get a PhD and you, they sign a board, then you are, are, are guaranteed of at least uh, three or so years before they, uh, they move on. So I think uh, these are some of the practical. Uh, yes, yes, we are doing it now, yeah. I think uh, nurturing and attracting is very related because the passion is all like, I, the, it's a link, I think. Like, passionate young researchers. One of the things that I, I ask for the people that is coming to CADEP to, with, to work with us in the last years was, do you want to be a leader of your country? <laughs> like, I think it's one of the things that I, I do because I notice in that question, like, if she really wants to do something for the country, because when I asked that question, I said, we are to supporting you to be a leader in the future. That's, that's one of the things that I, I am doing. You are not just, so, just a researcher. You are just a researcher of a think tank. You are preparing you to be a leader of this country. It's not just, it's not just to be a researcher or be a consultant. It's more than that. And I noticed in that if they are very, uh, uh, if they are afraid, or if they have fears of they really want to do it. And other things to nurture the, the people is, you, you kind of leave just the people to do the masters. We have to, we have to risk all the human capital. Like, as, after three years to be in Caleb, we have to risk all our human capital of assistance uh, all the time. And, but we are trying to, to get in touch with them, to try to attract for projects in the country in the summer of the studies, to be in contact with the people all the time, saying, well, how's your, how's your master's going? How's, how's your PhD going? Just to know if they are good, if they can come back. Yes, uh, as uh, my colleague uh, from there has mentioned, uh, we have been working on the long term uh, uh, think tank researchers development, but this time two issues are uh, uh, becoming uh, very critical. One is uh, about incentive or salary. The other is about mentoring. Mentoring. So what we are thinking of this is one is to, to let them uh, to, to, to work with, uh, as a consultant on their free time. The second is to create a linkage, network, from the renowned universities or research institutions and to work them, to attach them, so that they can, they can develop their skills of uh, producing uh, public, uh, publicable papers. Uh, 